Listen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo podcast here every week, episode 472 this week. Goodness. Yeah, I know. My name is Tom Marks. I'm your fill-in host while Casey DeFridas is recovering from Gamescom, but two Gamescom gentlemen here with us today are Mr. Per Schneider. I'm the assistant to the fill-in host. Ah, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember you. giving you that title, but that's all right. That's it. Also joining me is Mr. Zach Ryan. I am very jet-lagged. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, and then also joining us over the power of the interwebs, you might see the monolithic man himself to our left if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Seth Macy is calling in from the main office, which is your bedroom. <laughs> It's, yeah, no, this is an office. It's not a bedroom. Oh, excuse Thank me. You very much. Excuse me. So if we learned anything. It used to be a bedroom. <laughs> if we learned anything from Stephen King, it is haunted. Crazy, oh, yeah, everything crazy in haunted. is haunted. Okay, good. The, that fan is haunted. That GameCube down there is haunted. This All kinds a, of stuff is haunted. There's a GameCube? Oh, yeah, it's right there. Look. Whoa. Oh, ass. my God, there's a GameCube yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah, Seth came prepared for this. Nailed right, it. Very nice. It's actually stacked on another GameCube. So. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they're for. That's Seth's they have GameCube handles. Tower. Yep. Uh, if Seth cuts out at any point, we can just assume that he's playing GameCube in the background. Sure. That's why he's ignoring us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch Lite, mm-hmm. with which uh, Seth got to play, got hands-on with in New York, which is very, very cool. Boo. Um, we're also going to be talking about a potential <laughs> Overwatch port leak that may have happened and uh, a bunch of other stuff, including what we're playing this week and all that sort of thing. Real quick before we start that, uh, I'd love to hear from... Pear and Zach, uh, I know you guys had a whole Gamescom episode last week. Yeah. You guys filmed in Germany. Um, just really quick, like, what were you playing on the plane? You know, what, oh. what about the stuff around Gamescom? Because I know you guys talked about what you played there, but, like, what were you playing on the plane? How was the trip? You're obviously tired. Zach. Um, I played a lot of um, one of my favorite games, actually, uh, that I go back to pretty often. It's called um, Get Drunk. And stay out too late. Did? Okay, that's yeah. what you did again. Um, but then also on the plane, I only played Fire Emblem. The <laughs> the actual show itself, with the exception of the hour or so that Pear and I went and Brian went down to the booth, um, I I didn't have an opportunity to play anything. Wow. So I played Fire Emblem most of the way there. I played Fire Emblem most of the way back because I love Fire Emblem. I also watched <laughs> The Boys, which is a very good show. Great, right? Yeah. The Amazon show? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, highly rec- recommended if you're into mature um, superhero stories. Everybody like was like... Watchmen stuff. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, it's a gritty superhero story. And I was yeah. like, they're all gritty. I don't care. No, and then I finally started watching it on the plane, <laughs> and I think I watched like four episodes. <laughs> this so. one is gritty in the first five minutes. Uh, I played lots of Fire Emblem, uh, to nobody's surprise. Whenever there were times where I didn't want to wear my headphones, I played uh, Picross, one of the four Picross games on the system that I can alternate be- between. <laughs> it's so that. nice to hear that you're yes. finally getting into Picross. And, uh, yes, <laughs> and then I played Creature in the Well as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll talk about that. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yep. And uh, Seth, you were the you weren't at Gamescom, but you were the closest member of the mainland IGN team at <laughs> to- <laughs> Gamescom mm-hmm. over on the East Coast. Uh, but That's you, true. you sir, got to not only play or not go to Gamescom, but instead you went and tried the Switch Lite. I keep wanting to say the Switch Mini because all the like years of. Rumors and leaks and all that. No, that's mm. twenty years from now. That'll be the retro console. It'll be <laughs> this <laughs> big. It's like twelve K TV. Yeah. I didn't even think about the world where they like just keep just every five years after a console has died, they're like, all right, we're gonna make a mini one now. Yep. <laughs> just forever. So we. By I'm the way, it. I love them. By the way, we saw the Switch Lite at Gamescom, but there was a pane of glass in between us and the console, <laughs> so we got to hold up our. Mega switches to the 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 little brother. <laughs> Brian we didn't get to touch it. Brian pressed his face and hands against the glass like this, and it, and has, it was, still has that imprint. It was like so a, inappropriate that he did that. Like a like a weird. <laughs> They're very mad at him. Kindergarten handprint picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, obviously they were just hiding them, waiting for Seth. Uh, Seth. You, unlike these gentlemen, actually got to hold one, got to play a game. Yes, I guess I did. That, let, let's start there. Like, how much did you play? What did you play? That sort of stuff. I played Breath of the Wild, that classic <laughs> Nintendo game, uh. which I love anyway. And I've played, I think, 150 hours at least. In, but I didn't get to play my copy of Breath of the Wild. They sort of just were like, hey, what game do you want to play? They gave me the choices. And I said, I'll, I'll play Breath of the Wild because I'm the most familiar with so they handed me a Nintendo Switch Lite, the gray one, yeah. which I was at first Ugh. a little bit disappointed. The gray one, 
<laughs> turn <laughs> really attractive. You you cut out and Sorry. turned into a robot there a little bit. We're, One we're, more time. We we're auto tuning Seth's song today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, try again. I said that uh, they handed me the gray one, yeah. mm -hmm. and in person, the gray one is actually quite lovely and wonderful, and oh. I think it might be my favorite of the oh, three colors. God, wow. another one of the gray men. Well, Ooh. I mean, it's, you know, I live in Maine. It rains a lot. There's fog. So I'm just dr <laughs> yellow is drawn yellow. to the gray. Gray is name. No, the yellow one, I mean, all three colors looked incredible in person. Okay, they looked way better Cool. Um, in plastic. And the cool, like, Nintendo had these little, <laughs> these little flower displays on all the tables that were, you know, turquoise flowers, uh, gray flowers, and uh, yellow flowers. Uh, that was really cool. And they're like, <laughs> there are no gray flowers. Uh, no, these were these were grayish. Okay, flowers. they found them. They grew them. Nintendo made them. <laughs> Very nice. Just for yeah, Nintendo. Occasion. I just assumed they were fake flowers. Doesn't matter. I mean, Tell they might have been. I didn't get. I didn't smell. <laughs> All so, right. All right. Yeah. So how how did how did it feel? How did you like it? Was it? It did... feels it feels like almost bulletproof. Like it feels like if you were gonna get your child swear, oh. get them that. Really as rugged as a two DS. I mean, a two DS you could run over with a truck. I'm pretty sure. But as far as just it it feels extremely solid and good to hold in your hands. And I have you know rather large hands the kind that hit my microphone and annoy everybody <laughs> well i was gonna ask you about that because i feel like i i am probably like 70 30 with how i play my switch like mostly docked and like mm. a little bit handheld and i find that when i'm playing handheld it does get a little like crampy on my hands like yep. i do feel like the it's a little bit tight and so thinking about a smaller real estate in the switch light i i wonder what that means for um Dudes like you and I who have these big man hands, and I wonder, um, is the button, is the real estate for the buttons the same? They're just further out towards the edge, and how will it feel in my man hands? Also, for context, Seth if, Macy is roughly nine feet tall. Do you, yes. have, do you really have big hands? No. The biggest. I feel like they're like the same size as yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Do, do you feel like it's uncomfortable to hold, or? I, now, granted, I didn't play it for like an extended three hour session laying on my back in my in my own personal bed but i did find it was really comfortable to hold and i do have a little bit of a um, you know an issue when i do hold the regular switch it just my hands do cramp like you're saying but this one i don't know if it's just because it's just a little bit lighter i didn't i what i end up doing is i rest it on my pinky fingers when i play <laughs> <laughs> It's tea time with Seth Macy. It's uh -huh. very, yes, I'm very prim and proper. And uh -huh. it just, it felt great. It felt wonderful in my hands. What does it taste like? It tastes just like all the, well, <laughs> first of all, the schnozberry one does not taste like schnozberry. Uh -huh. well, okay. I feel lied to. It probably tastes like Huge that that, that coating that they put on the actual cartridges Ugh. to make you not, Hope not. eat them. Yeah. And the, and the uh the the coating on the outside of the the switch feels really good, right? The um yeah, it doesn't, the, it doesn't the, feel chintzy like you were saying it doesn't leave no. fingerprints and all that. It feels fantastic and I was amazed like I couldn't stop talking about how it doesn't pick up fingerprints. Mm. The plastic case at all, like hmm. none. And it was extremely hot that day in New York City and we went outside to do some stuff like on the roof and uh you know, I didn't get any nasty gross fingerprints on the uh, nintendo switch they Ooh. never know it's like uh it's like the perfect crime i left time, no fingerprint time out what uh what are you doing up there on the roof seth you're doing like a real karen situation you got a real rooftop party up there where you're just switching? Oh, you didn't see the video that's what they, they had it set up it was like a real life karen sort of deal and plus like, i was you know i was looking for any crimes that i might be able to stop vigilante stop so right. we have a we have a video of <laughs> seth and he, i've never seen anybody so happy about being on a roof <laughs> Really? Yeah, he's like, we've got the, I don't know, the Chrysler Building to the left. St. Patrick's Cathed the Cathedral on one side. I've got Rockefeller Center on the other side. <laughs> well, it's, I'm really chilling. excited. I'm really excited that you finally got to go to New York yeah. for the first time, Seth. That's so. what. That's what <laughs> right. most of the video is about. Is about the rooftop. The rooftop. Yeah. <laughs> also, there's this yep. switch. Yep. But yeah, yep. uh, it was. It's cool to hear that it is rugged as you said too or that it's like doesn't feel like it's just going to fall apart in your hands uh a question i had that i think a lot of people have is what about the d-pad oh yeah the d-pad is there it exists it feels 
great as far as a D-pad is you know concerned, but I can't speak to its functionality because I didn't get to use it, you know, like a playing one NES game. Right, on, right, uh, right. Yeah, I guess online or anything. Breath of the Wild doesn't really put any motion on the D-pad. It's no. just item selection. No. So, yep. yeah. But the motion uh, worked really well. That's cool. The accelerometer inside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it Did, felt uh, really. I was aiming, you know, the uh, bow and arrow with it, and it felt really great. That's so cool. You, are you going to buy one? It's my kids have asked for okay. Christmas. They said, okay. Oh, we want this Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh huh. But uh, last year they got that Pokemon special yeah. edition. Plus, so you already. Oh, one. plus yeah. you already have those two Game Cubes, so. They're probably set for Christmas. <laughs> I think no so. need. It's two GameCube stack rows. You there smash is. them together. Uh, the, the the funny thing is, uh, the, the sorry you you also have this year can also get a Pokemon Switch special edition. That's I'm true. Totally blanked out there. Oh, yeah. But it, it's yeah. it's funny how those just come around like clockwork. No matter what console is or Nintendo console is out at the time. I completely forgot that there was even a Pokemon game coming out the other day. Until the other day, <laughs> like I was, I was at the gym and I was like, somebody. I was listening to, I think I was listening to um, Giant Bomb podcast, and they were talking about like, oh yeah, and then you know, Pokemon's coming out soon too. And it's like, oh my god, I forgot about Pokemon. Yeah. I forgot that game was coming so soon. And there might be even more coming out this yeah. year. Yeah, we'll see. Is there anything else uh, uh, about the Switch Lite that you were maybe surprised by, disappointed by? Anything that like kind of doesn't jump out as one of the obvious questions? It fits in your back pocket very easily. Now, I don't think I would recommend hauling it around back pocket. But right. I think when it comes out, I'm going to try, we're going to try to do a video, see how many we could fit into a pair of Jenko jeans. Yes. That rules. <laughs> who's, uh, who's your internet service provider? I want to give him a shout out here. <laughs> Sorry. My internet provider? Yeah, you keep on freezing up a little bit. Oh, really? Oh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, lie. That's well, probably on our end. Oh, you think it's us? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my for god. For sure. Yeah, I'm okay. getting a lot of a lot of glitches and freezes from you guys. I'm okay. afraid. Well, yeah. It's a, new, it's a new studio, folks. So apologize some of the uh, the Seth Macy auto tuning. <laughs> I yeah. think you sound great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's someone. I can't remember who it was. Someone was saying that it's. Oh, I think it was Matt Kim, our, our, our reporter. Don't know. Who was talking about how um, it, it, it's amazing how just that little bit smaller makes the difference between being able to fit the switch in your pocket and not. It's mm -hmm. just like that little bit is like actually a big difference. You couldn't pay me to carry around a switch light in my back pocket because I know, I know yeah. that I will slip and fall and land on it and break it. I've done so many phones that way. <laughs> like I am so clumsy that I, I just, I know that is not the case for me. Wait, so. you fall on your butt a lot? Look at how tall I am. Yeah, but like I'm little, so lanky and awkward. Little kids fall on their butts. Like tall people <laughs> fall like more spectacularly. Yeah, it takes like. me a very long time. It's really weird <laughs> oh, to see in the wild. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Last question I have for you, Seth, about this thing. Uh, yes. There's a couple, like there's this question of some people think it's, you know, going to be too small to play comfortably, and obviously, you didn't think that was the case. No. What about the other end of it? There are some people who are like, "Well, it doesn't even look that much smaller." Like, do you think they could have gone smaller? Do you think they should have? Ooh, that's that's a tough one. I feel like it's at about as small as you can get it, especially uh, for a person with aging eyeballs like me trying to play through Fire Emblem and having a. A bit of a hard time reading some of the text. Yeah. That's everybody. A lot of people are talking <laughs> yeah. about that, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah. thank you. I don't feel yeah. I don't feel so old and decrepit anymore. But no, I it feels I mean, it definitely is smaller. It, you hold them together, the screen is smaller, but it doesn't feel smaller when you play it in handheld. Interesting. It was, I was actually very surprised how comfortable um it feels to play on a smaller screen. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you see the photos and you read the the dimensions and stuff, and I think that that's one thing. But I didn't really realize like how much smaller it was until Brian and Max did that video on the show floor, yep. where Brian just kind of held his normal size switch up to the regular or to the new one, mm -hmm. and I was I was pretty surprised at how much smaller yep. it is. Yeah. Cool. I still well, don't think I'm gonna get one. I got. I mean, I got <laughs> one on pre-order. <laughs> of course you Coming. do. Coming. Of course you do. Well, it'll be a prized collectible. You write all this off. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. I use it and, for personal reasons. And Seth can't say if they're getting one because his kids watch the show. So let That's me... Right. Okay, so let me just get put this out there. Yeah. Yeah. All of your Joy-Con 
all of your multiple consoles. Yeah. You it's all personal despite the fact that you're on a weekly Nintendo show. It doesn't add up. Okay. It doesn't add up to to that much. Okay. It doesn't make a difference. Talking about tax breaks right now? Yeah. Yeah, I mean sometimes I uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Look, it's just, a, I'm in a weird anybody, place. I'm in a weird weird place right now. Okay, I'm very jet lagged. If anybody <laughs> from the IRS is listening, um Zach uses all his games for work. When I was a, when I was a freelancer and uh, his TV, I had a tax guy that just told me he was just like just write everything off. Doesn't yeah. matter. Just write it all yep. off. Yep. I was yeah. like, well, okay. Yeah, so. it doesn't make much of a difference. Like I I looked at it. Anyway, this has been Just Nintendo Tax Chat. Yeah, Disclosure, a- NVC is not an official <laughs> tax license that's right. representative. That's true. Like, please do not take advice. Zach's advice. And <laughs> on, not just on taxes. Don't take my advice yeah. on anything. If, yeah. you, if you go to jail, it's, a good rule. it's on you, not on Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, let's move on to news from the week. Uh, there's been some cool stuff coming out. Let's start with the biggest, probably scariest thing. Not scariest. Most surprising. That was the word I was looking for. Uh, there was... An Amazon listing for a Power A, which is a reputable third-party kind of peripheral maker for Nintendo products and other things, a uh, Overwatch branded Switch case mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. by Power A listed on Amazon. It said it was officially licensed by Nintendo and Blizzard Entertainment. Correct. Uh, and within maybe a forty-five minutes of people re- reali- oh, discovering less. this, oh yeah, it was taken down. Yeah. Oh. It got nuked from outer space pretty quickly, which only led to its validity, I think. Only way to be sure. Well, yeah. So well, yeah. <laughs> the, the, other, the other part of this, though, is that it could, in some universe, be a fake that someone somehow got through Amazon's nope. listing process. I don't think so, because Blizzard did the same thing for um, Diablo on Switch. They also yeah. made a very like a premium uh, uh, Switch case with the old the devil on the front there. So yeah. and, a I, weir- and a weirdo amiibo, too. It's also been... <laughs> The Overwatch on Switch has been like whispered and rumored for well over two years now. And I feel like we've heard all these different there's also the 4chan follow up that was like, okay, there's a, a new uh fighter to be announced soon. It's a female character. It's not necessarily one that's in high demand. Right, but and we like, don't even know if that's at all. I'm it's not saying I'm not saying that that it's she's got a it, mech. <laughs> no, I think she's got a uh I think she moves real fast. I think the rumor oh. is that it's gonna be Tracer. But it's like all of these little things, all of these bits and pieces sort of point to the validity of Overwatch yeah. coming to Switch, which, by the way, I would love for that to be the case because I really enjoy Overwatch and I would like to play it um, on the go, perhaps. Seth, Seth, is that your read of this situation kind of too as, as someone who digs through Amazon list, the listings often? Uh, you know, the counterpoint is that for a long time, Walmart was offering a free Paw Patrol Switch case and I don't think we're going to see... Paw Patrol <laughs> on the Nintendo Switch. I could be wrong. Seth, I don't think that's the same, and I don't think they pulled the Paw Patrol Switch case. No. Hmm. This is this one. I think it's a little bit more suspicious. First of all, it looked. No, too, I think it it's. Too good. I think it's. it's I think yeah. it's a lock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we, so, we're also hearing rumors of a direct that's coming down pretty soon, which is in line with Nintendo's typical content release plan. Like yeah. they usually do a direct in the fall. Yeah. Like early any, fall. Any and, any rumor about a direct coming up is like could not be insider info. It could just be somebody being like. You know, I heard that there's going to be a direct coming up, and like ninety percent chance they're right. Legitimately, like, yeah, I was going to say you could say that any time of the year of like, hey, I know that there's a direct coming sometime <laughs> between now and the next three months, and you're like, yeah, of course, that that's when they do directs. It'll have but, uh, game announcements in it too. Yeah, there are probably what? some games leaks. Yeah. yeah, but I think that like, I, I don't know, I'd be willing to put my money on a a direct around the time of BlizzCon and this announcement being tied into like what's happening at. BlizzCon. I think this direct will be earlier. I think we'll get yeah. a September direct, and BlizzCon isn't until October. November, beginning oh, November. of November. November, that's right. Is that Bl- true? Why Bl- did BlizzCon I think it was so much two earlier? Months away. Oh wow. More than. Okay. Okay. Well, I made that up. Then I take it back. I yeah. thought I thought BlizzCon was in September. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Either way, it'll be but, September to but November. So <laughs> four, four out of four NVC people today believe Overwatch is coming to Switch. Is that I, right? I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. 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 I I to be honest, am shocked. It, like, if this is true, I'm shocked it took them this long. Because there was a report, I think it was like a year after Overwatch came out, or within the first two years of Overwatch's life, where uh, they were saying that something like 20%, more than 20% of PC Overwatch players were playing on computers with integrated graphics. Mm-hmm. They were playing on computers that didn't have dedicated graphics cards. Yeah. Which means that, obviously, the difference between a 
you know, porting it to a switch. It, it's not like a, a uh, what you know, a menial task. It's not like a small yeah. thing to do. But Overwatch but this isn't is necessarily a, game that a graphical has, powerhouse. Exactly. Either. This yeah. is a game that can run on a system that does not need a PS4 level. Like you can scale body. that, you can scale that game back, and it will still look very good. And yeah. then, and then there's precedent for games that are frequently updated, like Rocket League and Minecraft, that have the this, you know, the same systems and tech as like the Xbox and PC counterparts. Sure. So Overwatch could be updated the same way. And then, most importantly, Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, put out Diablo on the platform, and it blew up. And yeah. It did really well. And so, I mean, it's uh, honestly yeah, like it's, it's like probably like a way to play it. Yeah. yeah, I would say it's like a top five port. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, for one, welcome more ports out of the house of Blizzard. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I welcome our new uh, mm -hmm. Blizzard Blizzard overlords. overlords. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I'm curious about crossplay. If it is going to be the case, um, you know, Rocket League does it really well. Um, there are a few other. Uh, Fortnite does it really well. I would love for Overwatch to come to Switch and uh, give you the option to do so. To but I also by PC player. Well, here's the deal: is like I played a lot, a lot of Overwatch when it first came out, but yep. I've dropped off in the in the preceding three ish years. Yep. But I would love to get in and really just kill a bunch of like new Switch players. Oh, I see. And Shh, level up wow, real fast. Man. Yeah. Rude. Yeah. Play of the game. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I will say I don't think. That Overwatch has crossplay on the other no, consoles. No, it doesn't. Like, like I don't think that they can do that. Any, there's any of that yet. And even with Overwatch, but maybe that's a, a big Blizzard <laughs> BlizzCon announcement. Well, so this is the thing: is I, I think that could be I where it goes that. if they did a thing where, and this is full speculation, but if they did a thing where they did a Nintendo Direct, announced that Overwatch was coming to Switch, and then saved an announcement like, and it has crossplay at for BlizzCon later, mm -hmm. that that kind of tracks to me. That makes okay. sense to me. All right, let's make it happen, Tom. Get yeah. on it. Up next, uh, Mario Kart Tour has a release date. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> so Mario Kart Tour is coming out on September 25th. For those who don't remember, this is the iOS and Android game. Uh, it is coming out on both of those platforms on the 25th, same day. It will feature courses based on real-world cities in addition to classic Mario Kart courses. Uh, and we got a chance to... I don't know. I, I don't think I personally played it, but that we saw some gameplay, right? I'm sorry, you back. don't know if you played it? <laughs> I, I feel like you would remember if you I, did. I was just trying to remember like what happened with like there were some people playing it with like an Australian. That's account right. There, or there, there was right? a there, yeah. There was out in Australia as a test market. Yeah. As, as, like yeah. a, as like a beta. But Tom, yeah, you're not Australian though. No, I'm not. But <sighs> you're even wearing right. an America tie. Jury's still out. I am. It's That's just amazing. stripey right now though. Yep. I think it's weird that we kind of went from zero. <laughs> Zero to 60 on this news mm -hmm. <laughs> because, uh, sorry, but yeah. like we hadn't heard anything about Mario Kart on iOS or Android in so long. And then all of a sudden they were like, guess what? Release date. Also, here's some footage. It was like, what the heck? Yeah. Like, yeah. And they also did it on Twitter. Yeah. There's just like, okay, here it is. Like, I, I think it's really strange that Nintendo is doing these like one off announcements, mm -hmm. but I'm excited, particularly by this one because it's, uh, it's, a little closer to Super Mario Run than it is to Animal Crossing to me, I think, or will right. be. You know, like in the way that it's like a little more traditional and a little less, I mean, maybe a little less uh, microtransaction-y, but mm. remains to be seen. Yeah. I don't know. I, I also haven't played any of Fire Emblem Heroes, although now that I'm so into Three Houses, I might do <laughs> might do a good gotcha. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Can you eat a hamburger while you play? Mario Kart. You can. Oh, is this the promise of the? Uh, yeah, it's the a one finger one... game. So if you All have, right. if you have freakishly right, long thumbs, or you prop up your phone, <laughs> you could eat a. Burger. If you have big man hands, is what you're saying. Oh yeah, look yeah. at that. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I love the idea that this is Seth's deal breaker. Right? Is can I eat a sandwich while playing it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the dream, right? Is like. You want to eat a unusual? sandwich while you're playing Mario Kart. Like, <laughs> yeah. how no, many times? Judge. How many times have you been rounding the corner on lap three? You got a blue shell shell chasing you down, and you're thinking to yourself, "If only I had a nice roasted turkey club okay. right now." Every week, Zach. Yeah. All the time, it happens to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I lose so many races because I'm looking at the sandwich. I can't behold it. <laughs> okay. I didn't <laughs> see know that this, this was guy gets it. Go this way. Yeah. No, I, I'm really excited for this one, though. Like, I think Nintendo's mobile efforts are really cool. Like, I really love Super Mario Run. I thought Animal uh, Crossing was fine. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, yeah. Rave reviews from Zach. Yeah. I, I like how I started that sentence with, I, I really like Animal Nintendo's Crossing. mobile offerings, and then I just kind of went off the edge. I'm in Never a weird spot. I'm in a weird spot. 
What's Don't worry about I it. hated Dr. Mario. <laughs> like you just keep oh, going for Dr. Mario's pretty good. I like Dr. Mario. I like Dr. Mario more than most people like Dr. Mario, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. Super Dr. Mario. Sweet. Yeah. We uh Seth, sorry, was that were you one more thinging? No. Okay. Oh no. Cool. No, no, no. Cool, 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 He's cool. Just cool. greeting you. He's just stretching his big yeah. man hands. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta do that when <laughs> yeah. your hands are so big. Yeah. We had uh moving quickly along from that, we had two announcements this week of uh classic games making returns yes yes first of which is Mega Man zero slash zx legacy collection yeah. Yeah, so this is going to include all four Mega Man zero games and two Mega Man zero X zx games uh, in a single package which will be released on january 21st 2020 for 30 dollars uh, and there will be a physical retail option in available in north america uh, I don't. Yeah, think I already have... got mine there, buddy. What? Oh my! Oh, that's not it. That's the. Let's see that's the. Co- not it. That's the DS. Oh. DS version. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> did you have that uh, already? Yeah, of course he did. I actually oh, did. I keep it. I always keep it nearby. Okay. He, he, he's nice. got several copies. He carries one in his back pocket with his Switch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. So Mega this, Man... is, this is zero. You're yeah. not just straight up Mega Man X, but the Mega Man Zero you're, games. The, you're playing a zero. Hundreds of years after. Yeah. It yeah. takes place hundreds of years after the Mega Man games? Is that what you yes. said? Yes. Yes, that's correct. My goodness. Um, this brings the total count of Mega Man games available on your Nintendo Switch Entertainment System. 412. 29 games 29? now available yeah, on your Nintendo Switch, wow. which is awesome. Are you counting because... like each one in a collection individually? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. No, well, it's like five games right, collection-wise, right, right. but it's like all of those games have multiple games within them. So yeah, it, it, yeah. How are they at 29 games? Well, there, it turns out, w- let me take you back no. to where it all began. Go on a Even. journey, Capcom, mega journey. Oh. Capcom created the Blue Bomber Mega oh. Man. Uh, <laughs> in uh, This is like ask, asking Casey about a Pokemon made from clouds. I mean, honestly, like if there was, uh, <laughs> if there was an area of expertise that I could talk about, uh, yeah. To the extent that Casey could talk about Mega it's Man, Mega Man, or talk about Monster Hunter, probably Mega Man. Um, well, I, alas, that's all the time we have, though. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just another awesome collection. Like I, the Zero games are super fun, and well, most of them are super fun. Yep. Just like any Mega Man collection. But yeah, this is a really cool addition, and I'm really glad that these are coming to the Switch because they've long been um, sort of sequestered on the uh, the DS and the 3DS systems. So thirty bucks, fair mm-hmm. price. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think what, what? How many games are in this collection? Five, six, six, yeah. six games. Yeah, it's totally worth. Do we bucks. know who's uh, who's handling like this one? I know Digital Eclipse is handling, and M2 is doing the Turbo Graphics and the Sega Genesis Minis. I'm not actually sure. I don't have that in mm. front of me. I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm gonna know. have to look into that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Uh, one we got a the nose o- for news. <laughs> don't you have a computer there seth look it up damn it yeah but i also have a the the loudest mechanical keyboard that okay. they sell all right they don't sell it in some countries because of how damaging it is to your hearing he, he bought it for, <laughs> for that specific reason he went on amazon and searched loudest keyboard yeah. Yeah. to ward people away the other collection we got was uh just announced actually this morning for us although it was kind of leaked out of a GameStop thing the day before uh the SNES, Aladdin, and Lion King games are getting... They're calling them remasters, but really they're just like... They're just ports. They're just ports. Uh, and they're bringing it's actually those not over. the SNES. I'm sorry. I have to it's be the there. It's the Genesis guy. version. It's the yeah. Genesis version only so far oh, really? confirmed. Of, yeah. of Aladdin. It's the Super yeah. NES version of Lion King, so they oh, got that right. That's awesome. Okay. Yes, because that's what I was going to read here, is that it's going to include... Uh, the SNES, Genesis, and Game Boy versions of Lion King, and then Genesis, Game Boy, and mysterious Final Cut versions of Aladdin. I mean, hopefully... Well, I guess it's not the case. But I, I mean, the, the whole... Seth brought that point up because there's this, like, long-running yeah. conversation about which version of Aladdin is better. Mm. And, I mean, it's... Is there? Uh, yeah, I mean... Yes. The Super Nintendo Sorry. version is obviously the better version, but Sega fans will say that the Sega version is better, and that's <laughs> fine. Um, but they're two different. Wait, 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 wait. And now, now I need to know, Seth. Which camp do you fall on? Um, well, I Please actually remember never you're played on a Nintendo show of the Aladdin versions. Oh, okay, so. okay, okay. All right, um, but I'm going to say, why not both? Dot gif. Yeah. So I, I, I think that I, <laughs> I would love to see them both. I actually really like the Genesis version. The the animations for its time is, and still to this day are just amazing. They yeah. use original cell art that they adapted mm-hmm. and. It's a very pretty looking game. I, f- I feel like gameplay wise, the, the the you know the SNES version just feels better. Yes. It has 
Um, there's just a little bit more to do, but visually the the Genesis just looks like the movie. I think that's yeah. like the general consensus, yeah. the Genesis consensus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I just wanted to say just a fun trivia fact for you guys. Um, the uh, Lion King game that's included mm -hmm. in this, uh, no it? one has ever beaten it ever, actually. I no will, one in the world I, has that ever beaten true. that game. I yeah. can, yep. It's impossible. No well, there's this one. Done, I remember this one stupid jumping sequence. Is it with like the monkeys? The, it's the there's uh, a monkey sequence that's like that, and there's yes. also a giraffe sequence like the set ostrich to ostrich stuff. The giraffes. Uh, that's yeah, it. and yeah. it's set to just can't wait to be yes, king. That is it. like yeah, I still wake up in a cold sweat thinking about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really well, tough. I'm surprised they didn't bring back Jungle Book as well, the Super NES one. That one I actually I never like, played that one. I like it better than the Lion King. Hmm. Oh. Well, I've got great news for you guys who have terrible memories of. Dying to monkeys and giraffes while just can't wait to be king plays over and over and over mocking you. Uh, this collection will actually have a rewind feature and quick saves. Cool. Yeah, this is by Digital yep. Eclipse. This is, and yeah. they, yeah, yep. these are the kinds of things that they like to do for um, us baby gamers that aren't good at games mm -hmm. anymore. Yep. So, yeah, they'd let you <laughs> spam a re rewind feature. Yeah, yeah, let you spam a quick save. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. the, these two games will be out on uh, Switch, PS4, Xbox for $30 on October 29th. Now, I will say, that seems like too much to me. Thirty dollars. Well, yeah, I, I will say that Digital Media, or excuse me, Digital Eclipse has added a whole bunch of like bonus behind the scenes material that I think is going to uh, make that price seem a little more justified. Although value is wholly subjective. So it's it's fair enough. <laughs> that was a wonderful so, conclusion. So nice caveat there. Yeah, yeah. A nice mic drop. Um, it is. I, I think that's nice to point out though, because it is a, a little bit of an indication that it's more than just, you know, uh, two ports. It is, yeah, ostensibly two ports of games that have three versions each, and then all of this stuff for like fans of those games to really dig yeah. into and reminisce on. I think it's too that's much. That's cool. I think you think just, it's too much. Yeah. Still, Frank Zappoli no, was like thirty bucks for two games that were created in the 90s and they're they're like it's, and and lion king is not that great i'm sorry they're like kind of cult games too yeah like you know what i mean like they're licensed games which honestly yeah there's a, a hojillion of them these yeah. ones just happen to be particularly but, like well loved i so. mean think about what you can get for 30 bucks you can get an entire like modern assassin's creed game right yeah. now like it's just not like i i don't like this pricing these should be well, not, I don't these, know if it's going to be. These should be ten dollar collections. I'm sorry. No, I, I don't know if it's going to be the final, you know, game itself. But Frank Cifaldi on Twitter today was showing off like uh, animation, like uh, pencil drawings of the walk cycle or the run cycle yeah, for that's pretty cool. Aladdin that, that they picked up, you know, from some developer who had thrown them away but made a photocopy before okay. he threw them away. That's wow. pretty cool stuff like that. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, like I, I, real I, game I history. Like that. yeah, all right. That's that's Frank's whole deal, right? Like okay, the ephemera, oh, yeah. <laughs> the ephemera and the stuff that comes uh, with some yeah. of those games that like nearly lost a time. And honestly, Frank, Frank and our buddy Steve Lynn from Discord, they they run the uh, Video Game History Foundation. And if you guys don't know what that is, you should check it out online because they're doing some like pretty important work in terms of they like really are. preserving yeah. uh, video game Follow history. Follow both those dudes. Yeah, they're awesome. they're awesome. And they have like Steve especially has like crazy crazy stuff that he just tweets about that's just like super rare stuff it's yep. really cool uh one other kind of cool bit of news that came out uh this week was yacht club games developers of shovel knight <gasps> zach announced a new shovel knight game called shovel knight dig which is also the subtitle of a game you also really like and it's a roguelike and zach doesn't care anymore i'm really excited <laughs> for this but uh, Shovel Knight Dig was announced. It's in collaboration with a developer called Nitrome. Nitrome is actually one of my favorite developers from kind of the era of Flash games. Like when it was all just browser-based stuff, yeah. they just made these really fun, cool, simple, creative, beautifully pixel art made uh, games of kind of all different genres, a lot of platformers, puzzle games, just hmm. a bunch of different stuff. And this kind of really looks like a Nitrome game in a cool way. Uh, but it is a sort of randomized Shovel Knight game where they have these handmade chunks of levels and you dig down and you have to go through these. It might be all right together. for you it's, still. It's that's... not entirely procedurally yeah. generated. Dan it's Stapleton not. took the time to uh, explain what that meant to me in the way that Dan, only Dan can. Yeah. I was like, hey, dummy, it actually means this. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds a little bit better than, than you know, a completely randomly generated game or, or a roguelike. I'm just not really like a roguelike dude. Yeah. But I, I'll probably end up playing the heck out of this because I love Shovel Knight. Right. I love SteamWorld Dig. And this is the, 
you know, a pseudo sequel of both of those games. So it's, yeah. <laughs> and to be clear, they're not actually, it's not actually related to SteamWorld Dig. It's just also a diggy it's, down game. It is in well, our hearts and minds. Well, Shovel Knight, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, he actually has a certain tool that is good for digging. That Which one? never used it that Is way. it the rubber ball? It's a pickaxe, yeah. Oh, <laughs> got it. Uh, the other news that came out of this, because this was all related to PAX West, which is this weekend, uh, was that King of Cards, Shovel Knight King of Cards and Shovel Knight Showdown are going to be released this December alongside also finally the Amiibo 3 pack is finally, finally, finally coming mm -hmm. this December. I pre-ordered that back in the last century. Can I still get that? Yeah. You can still yeah. pre-order it. Yeah. Okay. You can still pre-order it. Make sure to follow IGN Deals on Twitter. There you go. Honestly, you should just be following IGN Deals because Seth runs it, and it's like the fu it's the no, it's, funniest. We don't know who runs it. Excuse me, a robot. It's all uh, bot based, but the bot has a great sense of humor. Uh, the last little quick news that I just want to like throw out there because it's really cute is that the developers of Cuphead released the sheet music for all of the music in the game. That's pretty cool. Uh, and they released it not just flat out, but they released it to like high school level sheet music and then professional level sheet music and then also like barbershop quartet sheet music. That's crazy. So they just like went a little <laughs> overboard and they were just like, here, just oh, learn it in schools and play it in your symphonies and they just put it out. And it's yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to have to get the quartet back together. That <laughs> Please tell me that's not a joke. Please tell me that's not a joke, Seth. Please. No, but my dad was actually in a barbershop quartet. My dad <laughs> okay. has uh, platinum pipes. Right. Mm. Right. Oh my. wonderful voice. The wow. B sharps. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, I, I think that's really cool. Like the Cuphead developers have a genuine love for their community, unlike a lot of like development teams that I've seen. Like mm -hmm. they just love that people love their game, and yeah. this is the kind of thing that I, I'm 100 behind them doing. I think it's really cool for them to toss that out. Yeah, I, I'm very, very much looking forward to Shovel Knight Dig. Also, I should say roguelike was my word, so we don't know the form of the game quite I yet. meant to say Cuphead, but I said Shovel Knight. Yeah. And so I was talking about the Cuphead developers putting their music yep. out, oh. and then I said Shovel Knight because I'm in a weird place. I'm very gentle. Okay. No so, worries. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Sleepy boy. But to be fair, both of those developers really do like their community. That's true, too. So. That's right. I, yeah, Works well, out. we talked a little bit about the Shovel Knight team on the last episode, and I can't wait for them to be done with Shovel Knight as much as I love Shovel Knight. So. <laughs> All right. Someday. Well, luckily they're they're working with a out, another developer to make yeah. this one, so they're clearly not fully <laughs> the ones making it. Uh, all right, let's move on to what came out this week because there was quite a bit that came out this week. Uh, first of all, first off, a game I want to really give a shout out to is called Wilmot's Warehouse. Mm -hmm. This came out on, or is coming out on August 29th for fifteen dollars. This is published by Finji. Um, and made by a couple developers whose name escaped me right now, but like they just make weird, fun, <laughs> cool games. They made this game called Loot Rascals. I yep. think it was two or three years ago. That is like a, a roguelike. Sorry, Zach, but it's like re like a really weird, just funny, <laughs> aggressively English roguelike. It's very, very good. Loot Rascals is what I we call say. the I Loot, Loot Rascals. Is what they call the IGN deals team. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Loot Rascals, <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. That's We're very, very good. rascally. Mm -hmm. But Wilmot's Warehouse, uh, I don't know if you guys got a chance I to I started it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It is it's a German. <laughs> it's a game, mm -hmm. they call it a game for people who like organizing things. It, oh, it is very uh yeah, it is very German friendly. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's yeah, you play you you basically have to um arrange little blocks with little pictures on them mm -hmm. in the right way and put them in the right places. Yeah. And, yeah. You're in a big empty warehouse, you are a little square man, and you get these shipments of little square blocks that have little different like clip art pictures on them, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then you pick them up and move them around the warehouse and can just place them anywhere you want, and you got to keep them organized, and then you get orders, and you got to find where you place them but, and but, deliver them, and but it just goes on forever and ever and ever. But it's a little bit more like, <laughs> it's a little bit like Box Boy, where you can kind of, when you pick them up, you can pick them up in shapes and oh, stuff cool. like that. Yeah, yeah, so it's not quite as simple as that. Yeah, and then also as you do go further, you get more points and you get upgrades and you mm -hmm. can kind of improve yourself. It's it's a very simple zen sort of game and it is, mm -hmm. I played it back at like a PAX two years ago or something and it's really, really cute and really worth looking at, even if it's not going to be for everybody. Uh, another game that is an indie darling that came out on August 29th as well is Heave Ho. That was for $10. This is this very strange physics-y, uh, platform-y sort of weird thing where you've got these wobbly arms. It's it's a funny, funny game. Cool. Uh, <laughs> and then the big one this week... Well, the Shovel Knight community... I'm sorry, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the big one this week is, of course, Astral Chain. Yeah. 
Uh, Astral Chain is coming out on August 30th, so it would be this Friday for $60, and we gave it a big old 9.0. Game looks awesome. I have not played it yet. Yeah, I, we haven't I yet. can't wait to, to get it. Um, I saw it at Gamescom, but the line was just too ridiculously long. Mitchell was on the show last week talking about how great that game is and how like deep the combat system is and how it borrows a lot of the best parts from a, a lot of Platinum's oeuvre. Yeah. So like I'm really excited mm. to to uh, <laughs> I'm excited to give that a shot because like I love Bayonetta. Um, mm-hmm. I like other Platinum games. And was it was it Mitchell who said it is one of the best looking games on the Nintendo? So Switch? Scrubbles, I think that Joel. was his headline for okay. for uh, his preview was like yeah. this is the best looking game on Nintendo Switch. So yeah. like, I I think so that pretty pretty graphic. Yeah, so. really really cool and also like really neat art 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 direction and character mm-hmm. design. But yeah, and control and and more than uh, very neat control. I thought you were just saying, like, also Control is a like good the, game. Like, like the video no? game? Yeah. Nope. This is a Nintendo podcast. I don't Thank know why you. I'm talking about Control. Also, no. our reviewer, Stephen Petit, uh, mentioned that not only does it look amazing, both handheld and uh, docked, uh, he, he said it just runs really, really well. I can just looking at Zach's face. Like, first of all, you're totally out of it. All you heard was Stephen Petit. <laughs> because he has <laughs> such tiny hands. And you thought it was a really small guy, didn't you? I could, just imagine him playing the Switch like this. You got, I could. <laughs> Steam Petit is a regular sized guy, but I could see it in your face. You couldn't get past it. I'm in a really weird place, you guys. <laughs> Welcome to post jet lag <laughs> NBC. Uh, uh, Seth, are you interested in Astral Chain at all? As you save me from this? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to probably, when I find time to play that video game, I'm going to play that video game. <laughs> Looks awesome. There's too many games right now, man. Okay. Too many games? So it happened. This this week feels like the week where suddenly it clicked and it's fallen. Well, it's been like a, such yep. a slow year all year, and then all of a sudden video games are like, oh, okay, time to get to work. Yeah. Like, yeah. And remember, we, yeah. we we haven't had the big Switch releases yet. There's still Zelda coming. There's yeah, still that's Pokemon true. coming. There's still oh Luigi coming. Well, and then on the other consoles, you get like Borderlands and Gears and all this stuff, Death Stranding. So here's the crazy, here's the crazy thing about Nintendo 2 uh, this year is... Of the top 10 highest average rated games on OpenCritic uh, so far in 2019, three of them are Nintendo games, and they came out one after the other. Yeah. There's yeah. Astral Chain, uh, Fire Emblem, and Mario Maker, all just like boom, 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 I top of the about list. Mario Maker. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Like it's been, yeah. it's, it's, and we knew this was coming. We were saying this, you know, last year we were like, this year's going to be stacked, this year's going to be stacked, and it's, ha- it's started now, right? Where it's, we're like halfway into this amazing run of one first party game or first or second party game a month i feel like that's maybe what the conversation was on on your side of the office but i i feel like 2019 going into it was like i didn't really have a ton of games that i was super excited for or or following really closely (laughs) because it just seemed to me like okay well this gen's wrapping up we're gearing up for the next gen and right and then all of a sudden it's just like i think this year we got more announcements that were okay and this is coming this summer. This is mm-hmm. coming this fall. This is coming before the end of the year. And it's just like, holy crap. Now all of a sudden the, the calendar is just loaded and I'm still trying to finish Fire Emblem. So, so what's happening <laughs> now what's happening now is the was the promise of a one one device Nintendo. Right? Mm-hmm. We used to get, you know, a couple of good games a year, but they were between the three DS and the and the Switch or the you know the the DS and the Wii U and whatnot. And now f- finally you're seeing what happens when all of Nintendo's First and second parties are just creating content for one console. Yeah. yeah. And it is like, what a time. Like, obviously, this is a Nintendo yeah. podcast. So, like, I take this with a grain of salt, but like, what an awesome time to be a Nintendo fan. Yeah. Like, you were yeah. saying, you know, we, we wrote, uh, I think it posted this morning, it was like, here are the best reviewed games or our favorite games from 2019 so far. And just thinking about my own list, it's predominantly Nintendo games this year. Like, yeah. mostly, I've spent probably 80% of my gaming time this year on my Switch. And that, has not been the case the previous two years. So, yeah, yeah. And, and then, and I think you're right, Zach. That the conversation around 2019 as a whole was not an exciting one. But I feel like I we just, also Nintendo specifically kind of was. They're they're coming out swinging in the second half of this year. Well, we just didn't anticipate. <laughs> we just didn't anticipate games like Borderlands and Death Stranding, and you know, like yeah. even as early or as recent as like March, people were like, "Oh, mm-hmm. Death Stranding's coming in 2022." Yeah, yeah, and then you know, oh yeah, that's gonna be. Yeah. I, I thought for sure that was a PS5 launch. Title. Yeah, seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then remember, we still have some third party stuff, some late arrivals like. The Switcher and games like that on the Switch. Well, and that's so. that's the other thing that's so dumb is like I was thinking about it this morning and I was like, 
I'm definitely going to get The Witcher on Switch, even though I've been like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't need to play it again. Yeah. Of course I'm going to get it. It's The Witcher, but you can take it anywhere. It's crazy. Zach, it's you. You're going to get the, the Witcher on Switch Lite. I buy them all. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm still Jury's still out. Uh, the last game I wanted to throw uh, or a mention to, Decay of Logos was supposed to come out on August 29th mm. for $20, uh, and it was delayed yesterday, I think, to September. You chose wisely. Yeah. Uh, we gave this game a 4.5, uh, and that was for the PS4 mm -hmm. version. Just to give a little full context, we actually reviewed this game with a 3.9 on Xbox One, found out that we were sent a two-month-old build of the game accidentally, mm -hmm. and all of these bugs that we cited, all these performance issues were supposedly fixed. We got an updated version on PS4, and it was only marginally better. And so we re-reviewed the game most, in its current state. I think most reviewers got the wrong version, and yes. then the developer reached out uh, over the bad reviews. I don't know anything about... A no, uh, new one, yeah. I don't yeah. know anything about Decay of Logos. What is Decay it? Decay of Logos, we've talked about mm. on the show before as being one of those games that kind of was inspired by or potentially ripping off, depending on your perspective. This was a whole discussion on NBC, uh, Breath of the Wild's art style. Like where you so ride was, a deer, this, remember uh, that okay, one? Okay, yes, yeah. so I do I, remember this. I, I played the Switch version a little, a little bit, and it is rough. It's um, very it rough. runs very sluggishly and like framing. when you when you're using combat which is on the shoulder buttons it like I feel like sometimes like the game kind of takes it as a suggestion that you're yeah. trying to hit something. Really? Like, it doesn't reliably fire. So there's something wrong. So I'm I'm happy that they're delaying it. Hopefully they can um, tighten it. Like looks wise, it's, a, it's very pretty looking. So such a yeah. bad look, art though. style. And, it's it yeah. this has been an unfortunate, unfortunate mm -hmm launch window week for this developer whatever was going on something bad happened yeah. i'm very they're not delaying it it's coming out right now on the other platforms where we found issues on the ps4 with it um i'm not or there but there are delaying the switch version i'm very glad they are just so they can they can try to figure it out yep uh so keep an eye we don't have a date for that it's sometime next month but if you were anticipating that there's a reason it's not out yet yep, yep. and Crazy. honestly you shouldn't have gotten it in the state it was in anyway. So we'll have to see what it's like in a month or whenever. Uh, moving on, let's talk about uh, what we're playing recently. Okay. Uh, any, any, any well, you Zach, were... are you Fire Emblem all day, all night? Just playing so much Fire Emblem. <laughs> I, did play, um, I did play about an hour of uh, Creature in the Well, mm -hmm. um, which is a pretty cool uh, indie game that's coming out uh, next week, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it comes out the 4th or the 6th. Um, it's a really interesting... Uh, pinball plus game it's like it's like pinball and action so like you're controlling this little robot man and he's got a sword that you ricochet um projectiles off of mm -hmm. to clear uh puzzles in these rooms um the art style is really neat and there's like the titular creature in the well is like this kind of like ominous creature that as you work your way through the game's world he's always there it's talking like to eyes, you basically yeah. eyes in the dark and you, and see, you see his, his hands like reach up yeah. and like yep. if you die he like grabs you and throws you out of the well and, and, you he, start in the and he doesn't want you there like he he doesn't immediately intervene but he's like creepily lurking going like you shouldn't be here yeah that's great <laughs> it's a really interesting yeah. like cool. The mechanic itself is like you you have two swords. One sword just immediately ricochets, and the other sword can hold and charge projectiles. So you yep. can kind of swipe it and like hold a projectile and then aim. And then you're solving puzzles by like ricocheting the projectiles in certain paths to yep. open up, you know, like to basically to eliminate these barriers and gain energy to unlock doors. Um, I will say I haven't, I've only played it in handheld, but I've heard. Um, that it plays a little bit better with a pro controller. That the aiming is a little bit more precise oh, when you're mm -hmm. not on the uh, the uh, switch controller. I gotta try that. I've only played it handheld as well, and I really like the art style and like some of the yeah, ideas beautiful are really looking cool. game. Really it's cool music. It's basically like your it's like puzzle rooms, right? Yeah. You have to hit these bumpers in order to open doors and like re-energize them. And the most satisfying thing about the game is like you can attract these energy orbs, but then you can whack them, mm -hmm. and you can you can find a baseball bat and most importantly a frying pan. Oh, and so I'm only <laughs> playing frying pan because anytime you hit anything it's like bang. that's really cool like it's this really loud yeah it, it just feels good to do that but i'm kind of at this point where i'm getting a little, a, a little tired of the like the the repetition of the the kind of similar puzzles mm -hmm. where it's like hit something with a ball is basically it so i mean um, that's kind of the whole game I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Hope, but i'm hoping that like some of the puzzle designs will change a little bit sure um because some puzzles can also be frustrating, like walls coming up and you have to time it. And if you don't hit it at the right time, you got to do it all over. Like yeah. That sort of thing. Um, but really interesting game. Um, 
I'm going to stick with it. Played some. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited. I heard the bosses are really cool, and I've yet yeah. to see a boss. So yep. mm -hmm. I'm only about, I've only played about 45 minutes, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm digging it. Uh, also, I've been playing a lot of Fire Emblem. Let me tell you about this. Have you played that? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to talk about it. Anymore. <laughs> uh, Edelgard is making a play for the kingdom. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Damn you, Edelgard. What are you playing? Me? Yeah. Uh, I've been playing Wilmot's Warehouse because I've been enjoying that. By the way, I forgot to Say mention... Say that again, what? Oh, Wilmot's, Wilmot's Warehouse. Warehouse. Yeah. I forgot yeah. to mention earlier, uh, full disclosure, that was a Humble original, I think. It's oh, now, okay. pub now published by Finji, but I think I, I got its start that. through Humble, um, who our parent company also owns. Yep. Uh, I've also been playing a game that I really want to give a shout-out to. It came out last week while y'all were in Gamescom called Invisigun Reloaded. Uh, this is a game that used to be called Invisigun Heroes on PC and now is out on Switch as Invisigun Reloaded. And not only is it just out, they also added a whole bunch of like campaign content, essentially, whereas before it was mostly just a multiplayer sort of local co-op craziness game, although I think it has online too. Uh -huh. uh, but the, the, the elevator pitch of this game, Invisigun Heroes, is Bomberman, like top-down old-school Bomberman with guns, but everyone is invisible. Except, cool. doesn't it, it relies on the old Klingon problem of you can't fire while cloaked, right? Yeah, so if you fire your weapon, everyone <laughs> you can see where away. you are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty interesting. And then there's, there's all these other little details, like there can be puddles of water. If you walk through those, you'll see footsteps, but you mm -hmm. won't know whose they cool. are. Uh, all the audio is very positional, so you can hear footsteps, and you'll know which side of the screen it's coming from. If you bump into something, it fla that object flashes your color. So you know, like, kind of where you are if you're, like, bumping into stuff. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really, really, really wonderful uh, local co-op brawler in the same kind of vein as Towerfall. Obviously, Towerfall is a very, very high bar to hit, so it's not, like, that amazing. But it is a very, very good game. It's worth mentioning in the same breath, that's for sure. Um, the uh, problem with the original game that I, I think I had and most people had with it was that it was really hard. Ah. Being invisible is mm -hmm. an incredibly, like it's a thing that you have to get good at and you have to learn and, and you have to practice at. Um, and it's very, very difficult. The thing about the reloaded version that's so nice is that all these added single player things give you a chance to get comfortable with the systems in a way that's not hyper competitive. So you can learn how to play, you can figure stuff out, you can get a little bit of experience before you even ever fight another player. Um, and I really like that about it. I really wanted to give it a shout out. I want to play it in the office some because it's very silly, weird, fun party game. Yep. Uh, for that. What about you, Seth? Uh, also, I've been playing. Also, Seth. By the way, I realized yeah. that uh, the camera has slowly tilted during the show, and you're now mostly off has screen. It? Yeah. Maybe but, it's maybe it's me who's been tilting this whole time. I, I mean, I'm a little tilted by it. I don't know if that counts. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about you? What have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing Fire Emblem, but I have not been able to give it the time that I feel like it deserves because I've just <laughs> been too busy and I'm missing out on all the memes and everybody's talking about their favorite characters and I've only maybe played three hours. So it's kind of a bummer. Only three. I part I'm of the not, problem I'm was when to I shame. I'm not trying to shame. But well, I was I took it on the on the plane with me. But the the thing is, when you fly from Maine to New York, it it's like 45 minutes. Right. So I also um I downloaded Roadhouse uh, to my phone and I ended up watching you know one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> you chose Roadhouse over. Uh, over I didn't Fire choose Emblem. Roadhouse. Roadhouse chose me. <laughs> you know that's, that's an interesting point about the five, forty-five minute flight because I've fallen. I hate to say this. I've fallen off of Fire Emblem on the for playing Fire Emblem on the train because a forty-five minute train ride. It's is, not enough to get something done. No, and no, that, and it feels really debilitating yeah. to not have enough that's, time. You can, I mean, you that's can maybe. That's my problem. I... Go ahead, Seth. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. Oh, yeah. no, no. No, but uh, I was just going to say that I really want to like sit down and just like enjoy the hell out of this game with like a huge block of time. I just want to lose track of it. And what ends up happening is I sit down and then something comes up. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just, I cannot just sit down for like a whole weekend and think, play this game like the way, I feel it deserves. I love how the sun has set. In yeah. The, now it's dark. <laughs> in, in Maine, soon like it's. Salem's lot vampires are going to come out and all of that. <laughs> I think you like in order to really like make any headway, you got to do you got to have like at least two hours to sit and play because at least with yeah. two hours, you can get a couple of battles under your belt or you can go through I, a full 
day or week of instruction and exploring. I and feel like, like the paralog, like some of the side battles you can you can pull off in 45 minutes. I mean, so I'm that's the thing. On. The combat you yeah. can. The yeah. combat, I think, works in short bursts. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that I can go into a day, start a day of exploring the monastery at the start of my train ride, and 45 minutes later when I get off the train, not be done with that monastery trip is like really, really... It, it just hinders me. It makes me feel like I'm hmm. not accomplishing. You didn't have you, complete something. I see. Have you yeah. made it? Have you? Have you made it to the thing? No. Okay. okay. So <laughs> if you if you're not if you th that gets a little bit shorter. Yes. Right. After the thing. Yeah. yeah. But um. Yeah. I, I like the, me. I if you're like me in the first part of the game, I had to talk to everybody. I had to find everything. So that's so, the yeah. issue. You'll yeah. get to a point where like the, the uh, thing, the, it's not a spoiler to say that the beginning of the game is more of a draft of trying to figure out who are your favorite <laughs> co characters. You can recruit people and all of that. Yeah. And it gets a little bit more simple once you've kind of got your team together. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel compelled that you have to, Talk to every person in the nation. I love yeah. that we still manage to talk about Fire Emblem yeah. this much. Yeah. So don't keep stick with it. Soon it'll be more a uh, uh, bus or train sized. Yeah. So oh, man, that's a good wait. game. Besides Roadhouse, anything? Besides Roadhouse, what else do you need? I mean, I guess I watched Point Break too. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. And Perry, you already talked mostly about you. You're. I talked about the yeah. Uh, Fire Emblem, the Cave of Logos, Creature in the Well. Um, I, I uh, Fire Emblem is not done. I'm gonna keep on playing. Yeah, I'm excited to to try Astral Chain out this weekend. Probably. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeez. I'm gonna play some Astral cool. Chain. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, let's jump along to our favorite little game, Question Block. <gasps> yeah. Uh, from Ryan Maxwell. Yep. He didn't shoot that one down. All right. Uh, from Ryan Maxwell, do you think the game industry is becoming oversaturated with too many great titles out there? How do you think this will affect the industry in the long run, especially Nintendo this year? There are so many great games, and I want to support the developers, but sadly, I'm going to have to skip some titles due to lack of time and money. Uh, this is an interesting question because it's one that we constantly talk about of like, man, there are a lot of great games coming out. And even in a year that we thought was going to be kind of relaxed, we're now like, oh, man, there are too many great games coming out. Yeah. So do you think this is ultimately a bad thing? Do you think a rising tide raises all boats? No, Seth, you're shaking no, your no, head. No, I don't think it's bad at all. Why would it be? Remember when we used to have a, a lot of bad games? That was yeah. terrible. <laughs> Nobody yeah. liked that. That's so, true. I hated that. I, I'd say, I mean, there have been time periods where actually it felt like there were way too many big, like, triple A games bumping into each other. We've had some holiday seasons where you literally had to decide between, you know, the biggest franchise from Nintendo, the biggest franchise from PlayStation, a rock star game on top of a, you well, know, a main, mainline game from Assassin's Creed, all of yeah, that stuff October, together. Yeah, October 2017 was, like, yeah. Mario Odyssey, Wolfenstein... And Assassin's Creed all on the same day. Yeah, and they all right. they all like eight, eighty hour huge games. games right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I actually, I mean, obviously, it it could happen that there are just too many titles, and then some really expensive to produce games will not see sequels because they didn't make enough money. That could always happen. But at the same time, I think as long as we we don't like as long as every game is not a battle royale game or not every game is an op op uh, an open world game, I think people will pick and choose, and there will be these communities of millions around these titles. I yeah. think gaming has just become bigger. More and more people play games. Um, and the only thing that I think will come to a head is certainly, you know, indies have seen a rise and there's so many of them mm -hmm. competing for mm -hmm. time and space on platforms like Steam and, and also on, on the mobile side. Well, know? rightfully so, because, I mean, you've got a game like um, The Outer Wilds mm -hmm. that I have not had an opportunity to play it yet, but people, s the, the folks that have played it in the office are like, hands down, my game of the year. The, yeah. the best game that I've played all this year, maybe in several years. Yeah. And so, like... It's it's tough to balance like whereas before you only had Nintendo, PlayStation, and Microsoft making mm -hmm. the games that everybody wanted. Now you've got all these other folks that are making these games, and it's it's yep. it's ultimately comes down to a question of taste because mm -hmm. you could you could play like Pat in our office plays maybe two games every year, but he chooses big open world games and he just sticks and, with them all the way and through. S and yeah. Stadia will see original software too, right? They created a game development team. They haven't announced anything That's yet. Right, yeah. So there's one more player in the market and then, I mean, the big issue is that some of the bigger games just last longer, right? Yeah. They, for a while, every, everybody looked at Destiny and said, all right, we all want to make a game like Destiny where we release new content every month and it keeps on growing and growing. Like, obviously, Anthem tried and, like, uh, Avengers still kind of looks like it takes that model, but... Um, 
that has oh, that's a whole kind of tapered off a little bit, but obviously people still play Fortnite and Epic still keeps on releasing new stuff for it as well. It is it is very it is very crowded. You're right. We'll see. But that's happens. not necessarily a bad thing. I think is no. the the general consensus on this panel, right? Totally. Yeah. We, we we like no. many games. One last question. Also, actually, real quick to, to Ryan, uh, I'll say the other thing about saying I'm going to have to skip some titles due to lack of time and money. I think there's also an impulse in mm -hmm. nowadays, especially in the internet culture where everyone's talking about everything, that you want to be part of every conversation and you feel like you're falling behind if you're not playing a thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's a totally natural way to feel. It's a way I feel a lot of the times when I manage, accidentally skip a game that a lot of people are excited about. I just encourage folk to like not... Don't feel bad about that. Don't feel like you have to hit every conversation. And, you, and also, like, gonna, and you'll wait just drive and you yourself get the crazy. games cheaper in a year, yeah. right? Like, you can, <laughs> honestly, it. I mean, like, well, when there are too many games, then wait on some and of them. And think about the way that, that 2019 has played out where we had this sort of, like, we had a couple of heavy hitters right at the beginning of the mm -hmm. year, and then there was a long stretch where there wasn't a lot of stuff happening, and I got to catch up on a lot of games that I missed from previous yep. years during that stretch. So it's like... You know, just because you're not playing them when everybody's talking about them doesn't necessarily mean that you won't ever play them. Yeah, January, yeah. February might be a good time to catch up on some of the titles you're missing. Like yeah. we, <laughs> we might not have a Resident Evil remake in Capcom you know, has, early in the year. In the last couple of years, Capcom has dominated that first yeah. quarter slot. Yeah. But yeah, I, who no, knows? No God of War. Yeah, in March. Uh, uh, hey, uh, can we get any more questions from more Ryan's, or was that it? Uh, there is one more question, actually, from yep. Ryan, if okay. you want. Ryan Fleischman asks, okay. now that the popularity of the Persona and Fire Emblem series has greatly expanded, is it the right time to bring Tokyo Mirage Sessions to Switch? Yeah. Uh, this this Zach Ryan fellow. I mean, I, I, played, <laughs> I played probably a dozen hours of Tokyo Mirage Session on uh, Wii U, and I thought it was a really cool RPG. Um, it's got a lot of like cool ideas going on there. I think it was just suffered from... Just being a Wii U game and yeah. also being an incredibly like niche market at the time, but you're absolutely right. Like uh, Persona Five and Fire Emblem Three Houses have suddenly put those franchises uh, like right on the forefront of Game of the Year conversations. So like, yeah, I, I think absolutely that'd be worthwhile to we put this like crossbreed of a game on Switch. It'd be awesome if it didn't have such a dumb title. It's a stupid title, <laughs> it's but just I mean, it's a bad name. It's like, a bad name. If that name says "Don't Buy Me." Tokyo Mirage Sessions. It annoys me just well, hearing it's that not, name. It's not. It's called. It's called Tokyo Mirage Sessions F E Sharp. Yep, no, mm -hmm. it's the full title. <laughs> and <laughs> so when they put it on Switch, it'll probably be called like S Switch Edition Deluxe as well. But I, I, I think in addition, obviously, to people, you know, waking up to Persona, which is a freaking amazing franchise, and Fire Emblem, which has always been a, a freaking amazing franchise too, um, is that people might be more open to different type of gameplay concepts. Like Fire Emblem snuck in a lot of like dating sim relationship management stuff. I mean, there, there's drinking tea but that's i mean you, persona's doing the same thing yeah. right it's like you foster relationships outside of the battlefield so that you have different strengths exactly and, yeah and so i think the where the market may not have been ready on you know the the, the wii u or or earlier than that maybe some of those games could return now uh -huh. and find an audience i think yeah. it'd be really cool totally they should totally re release some of the the games that tanked on on gamecube and i'm sure we'll hear of one soon whether your name is ryan or not you can always ask us questions by sending an email to at or nvc at ign.com or going to the NVC podcast forums on Facebook. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, I will say I want to do this shout out at the beginning, and I totally forgot something to do here as well. Uh, a quick shout out and welcome to Logan Plant, who is actually our new production assistant on NVC. Uh, you might have seen him running around the forums there, but uh, thank you very much to Logan. He's actually been helping us out behind the scenes for like a month or so already, but he's been making a great, great uh, contributions to the team. So welcome to him. If you see him on Facebook anywhere, say hi and tell him good job because he's doing a good job. Thank you, Logan. Zach, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ZacharySD, and you can find me right here on NBC just about every week. What about you, Pear? You can find me on Twitter under Pear IGN. Mm -hmm. And Seth? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Seth Macy. Or uh, somebody running the IGN deals Twitter sometimes uh, has my same voice. Yeah. Lots of good, good, lots of good rhymes. It's over a there. really good non-spammy <laughs> feed to follow. I actually use it just to know when to pre-order Amiibo and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those deals, I've, not to cast shade, I feel like a lot of those deals sites are just very like, here's everything. And and Seth, you do a good job of of curating that sort of noise. Oh, uh, basically, all I'm doing is like, hey, here's something I like, and it just happens that the audience.
likes it. So it's yeah. good. Very so you can, yeah. you can look out for a Blu-ray copy of Roadhouse on the IGN <laughs> next oh, week. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's actually a good one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all the time we have, uh, we have this week. Uh, NBC is on YouTube at and IGN and all the podcast services every Thursday at 3 p.m. Check us out there. Uh, and thanks very much for watching because remember, this is the only place where you can get, get the, the thing. thing. Alexa, play IGN.